morning, everybody. I'm very happy to be uh, invited to give a talk about the demo ready blanket concept in the Eurofusion program. Mm, this program is done in the ready blanket project in Eurofusion. Here is the outline. Uh, I will first talk about why we need a ready blanket. Then we'll talk about what is OHCBB and what is OWCL and why those blankets have been selected as candidates for demo blankets. And thereafter, I will, I will say some more about the common features and the, the requirements. Um, the update will talk about the current HCBB reading blanket design and the, the current WCL design laid by uh, INEA and the HCBB laid by KIT. The update will talk about the, the challenges that facing the both concept. Then I will conclude. Before I talk about why we need the, the breed blanket, I will see some words about the role of the tritium in DT fusion power plant. In any DT power fusion power plant, uh, there is the DT the tritium and the deuterium reaction to produce energy. As we can see here, in the, this is the uh, schematic of a uh, fusion power plant. In the core is the DT plasma, then the energy in a form of uh, neutrons is transport to the component that is surrounding the plasma. And this component will extract the heat to the power generation system. Through this generation system, we can further to produce electricity. However, we have this uh, tritium. Tritium is needed. However, tritium has a very short lifetime. It decays at the rate of 5.5% uh, per year, which means we don't have any uh, enough resources in the nature. That means we need to uh, produce by ourselves. Here I calculated the, the, the demand of a uh, fusion power device. For example, for one gigawatt fusion power device, it consumes about uh, 56 gram, kilogram tritium per, per, per year. And for the EU demo, which is a two gigawatt fusion power device, it consumes about 112 kilogram tritium per, per, per year. And what we have in the global inventory of tritium at the moment, as, see, as can be seen from the uh, graph done by Richard Pearson, we can see that the total global tritium inventory is below 40 kilogram. And um, this is mainly produced by the heavy water reactors the so-called Kandu reactor, mainly located in Canada, through the following calculations, uh, following reactions, the neutrons is heating the deuterium, then it will produce a tritium and the gamma. So therefore we need to produce, uh, because of the, the inventory of the global inventory is so low, so we need to produce tritium by ourselves. Here I showed the, the reaction of uh, producing tritium. This, uh, this DT reaction from the plasma will produce a helium and a neutron. Then this neutron can be used to react with lithium-6. With this reaction, we can produce tritium. And the produced tritium can be recycled and uh, get in, uh, rejected into the plasma. This is the full uh, fuel cycle. The main functions of the blanket, as we can see here, uh, the following figure in the center of the, of the uh, device is the plasma. The blanket is surrounding the plasma so um, about 80% is surrounded by, by blanket and the 20% by the diverter. And this, plus, this uh, uh, blanket is also uh, protected together with the vacuum vessel. Um, 
to shield the magnet that is behind the uh, pl pl behind the uh, blanket and vacuum vessel. So the main function of the breed blanket is to breed in tritium to make sure that the tritium can be self-sustainable. The second function is the treat removal. The blanket will need to transfer the heat for the electricity production. And the thirdly, the shielding performance to protect together with the vacuum vessel, the magnets from neutrons. Here is a schematic of the process of uh, the fuel in fusion power plant. The lithium that can be uh, mined from the ocean and also the deuterium can be also easily get from the sea water. So the lithium is uh, put into the blanket that is surrounding the blanket uh, plasma. The reaction will produce neutrons. This neutron will then react, produce tritium. The tritium then is therefore extracted through the tritium extraction system. And the, through the process, this tritium will be uh, transferred to the fuel plant. There, together with the deuterium, they are injected into the plasma center. A few words about the, the Eurofusion organization. Eurofusion is established by uh, 30 research organizations across Europe, including uh, Switzerland and the UK. Eurofusion has the function of co coordinate the joint European efforts on developing fusion energy. And it, it has a budget for the last seven years of about 1.2 billion euro. Here at this side, I showed a organization chart from the Eurofusion organization. It is headed by pro the program manager, actually is uh, Tony Donet, and there are many departments. Within this uh, Eurofusion organization, we have a department of fusion technology, which is in charge of the demo development program. The breed blanket is one of the demo program projects, one of the 12 uh, work packages in the demo program. A few words about the uh, brief history of the European breed blanket program. We have in the Europe developing uh, a long history of developing breed blankets since 80s. And then we have done different uh, uh, activity on, on different projects from, uh, for demo and for the T TBM, the test blanket module for each project. And <clears throat> our, for here, I will just uh, focus on the Eurovision um, phase. Since uh, we established the Eurovision project for uh, Eurovision organization in 2040, there is uh, totally there is four concepts to be developed in Europe parallelly. The so-called uh, water cooled lithium lead, the helium cooled paper bed, the dual coolant lithium lead, and the helium cooled lithium lead concept. And uh, this program lasts uh, uh, until 2018. There is the uh, collaboration between Eurofusion and the Fusion for Energy. Fusion for Energy is the organization that is responsible for the European contribution to each project. So uh, uh, Fusion for Energy is responsible for the TBM project. There is a collaboration and they have uh, selected uh, mm, from the four concept, two blanket concept, the HCBB and the WCIL concept as the EU demo travel blanket. Therefore, uh, these two concepts has been further developed in the demo project and also in the ITER TBM project. This Eurofusion program has also divi uh, divided into two phases. Uh, the first phase is the so-called pre-conceptual design phase. 
that is lasting from 2040 to 2020. It was concluded last year, and starting from 2021 to 2027, this uh, conceptual design phase will uh, continue. Within this uh, development phase, we will have also different uh, milestones. One of them is in 2024, there will be the so-called blanket selection review for the demo. And at the end of 2027, the so-called conceptual design phase should be concluded and uh, enter to another phase, the so-called engineering phase of the blanket. As I said, yeah, the HCBB blanket is uh, developed at KIT and the WCL blanket is developed at INEA in Italy. So what is OFCBV? The FCBV is the helium cord paper bait ready blanket. In the plasma, mm, there is the DT reaction. It did produce neutrons. And this neutron is, however, uh, will be lost due to many reasons, due to leaking, absorption, and streaming. So we need to uh, multiply the neutrons in order to get enough to produce enough tritium. So therefore, we need a neutron multiplier to uh, multiply the neutrons. In the HCDB, the so-called uh, beryllium or beryllium ferrolite uh, is chosen as neutron multiplier through this reaction. And the uh, multiplied neutrons will be reacted again with the lithium component. The lithium component used in HCBB concept is the lithium ceramics. This reaction, with this reaction, there will be uh, tritium produced in the blanket. And the in between of the two materials, there will be the different cooling structures and the, the first wall in the front. For the material of structure, the Eurofer material is used due to, uh, because of the reduced activation, the high performance of uh, heat transfer. In the FCBB concept for the helium, uh, for the heat extraction, we are using pressurized helium at the temperature of 300 degrees C to 520. So why we choose the FCBB as the candidates by the Eurofusion program. First, for the tritium grading function, in the lithium component, we have a high lithium density, which means we can produce efficiently the tritium, which can also uh, make the reactor compact and with a low lithium-6 enrichment, which could reduce the cost. Secondly, we can avoid reaction and the corrosion in the uh, component. That, that means there's no need for coatings. And thirdly, lastly, we have a very uh, established tritium extraction from the lithium ceramic, which is a simple and a proven technology in the industry. For the neutron multiply function, the beryllium or beryllium alloy is the best neutron multiplier in the nature. We can um, check it in the graph of N, N to N reaction. It has two functions, uh, the neutron multiplier and the moderator. The neutron multiplier will multiply the, from the neutrons from one to two. The moderator means uh, the neutrons will be moderated that means the energy of the neutrons will be reduced to thermal spectrum, which is better for this reaction to happen. So um, it is concluded that the beryllium is the, from the neutron multiplier function is the base neutron multiplier in the nature. Regarding to the material of structure, we are using Europe, which has a very high temperature of high temperature of operation, 
uh, about 550 degrees and a good thermal conductivity compared to the normal stainless steel, it is two times higher. And it has a very good capability for high irradiation environment. For the heat extraction, um, we are using helium. The helium is neutron transparent. It has no reaction with, with uh, I mean, the helium has no reaction with uh, neutrons. Therefore, there is no activation. And the helium is in one phase, one, a single phase, which make it uh, simple for the high temperature operation. And the helium is uh, chemically inert. There is no need for chemistry, chemistry control in the cooling system. And it has a very good compatibility with Europa and the functional materials. The functional materials is the lithium ceramics and the neutron multiplier. And also it has experience in the nuclear industry. Now comes to the WCL. What is exactly the WCL? The WCL is the water cooled lithium lead ready blanket. For the neutron multiply function, the lead has been used as the material. And for the uh, treating ready function, of course, the lithium-6 is selected as the material. And in the established air concept, these two uh, elements can be combined into one single uh, component, that is the lithium lead alloy. This alloy is, has the function of treating breathing and also the neutral multiply function. The material used for structure is the Eurofoil, which is the reference um, material in Eurofusion program. And then for the heating transport, uh, pressurized water has been used at the temperature of about 300. So why we have chosen WCL for the candidates by the Eurofusion program? First, this lithium lead alloy is uh, combined the two functions, the treating breathing and the neutral multiplier, which means the system could be simpler compared to other systems. Certainly, there is no neutron damage to the functional material, that is the lithium lead. And also, there is the possibility of control of the treating breeding on land, which means we can control the treating production rate. For the structure material, it's the same as HCBB because this material has been selected in Eurofusion program as reference steel. For the heat extraction, um, pressurized water, it has a very large abundance and it's very cheap. It has a very excellent heat transfer performance and it is a very good neutron shielding material. Furthermore, because it has been widely used in the nuclear industry. The common features, the demo of Eurofusion program is shown here. In the Tokamak building, in the Tokamak building is the Tokamak um, plasma chamber. Here, the plasma is located here. And as I said, the blanket is surrounding the plasma together with a uh, diverter. This uh, device is a large device compared to ITER. ITER has a major radius of about 6.5 meter for for demo we have about nine meter and uh, behind the blanket is the so-called vacuum vessel to protect the vacuum conditions and behind the vacuum vessel is the um, superconductors and uh, also we have different other um, ports the upper ports for the for the feeding pipes of the blanket and the equatorial port, for example, for the, for the limiter or for the heating and current drive. Here, the structure of the EU demo has been 
um, separated into 16 sectors and each sector is combined by inboard segments and outboard segments. There are two inboard segments and uh, three outboard segments. The basic the top level of requirements for, for the EU demo is to at least to have a, a availability of large than 30%. For the TBR ratio, we need to reach a required TBR should be larger than 1.5, 1.05. For the design TBR without uh, loss of coverage, we need to uh, reach 1.15 TBR. For the neutral shielding, we have to make sure the nuclear heating in the magnets behind the blanket and mark vessel should be low than face value. The vacuum vessel damage should be low than 0 0.2 dpa per four per year. And the, the heating production in the material in the steel structures that is to be rewarded should be low than one APPM per four per year. And also the shutdown loss rate should be lower in the accessible regions should be lower than 100 micro -servet per hour. Of course, we have also the temperature limit for the structural material, which is uh, uh, the lower boundary is due to the DBDD shift. The DBDD is the so-called duct operator trans transition temperature. When the steel is radiated in the reactor behind this lower base, lower than this temperature, the material can be becoming very uh, brittle, which will reduce significantly the strength of the material. And the, the upper bound is limited by the creep. When the temperature of the steel uh, reached higher than this temperature, 550, and the under irradiation conditions, the material of the property of the eurofoil becomes very bad. So we need to, in order to um, have a safe operation, the temperature of the material of euro should be behind, uh, should be between these limits. Also for the thermal mechanicals and the design, we need to fulfill the criteria that is in the nuclear codes and the standards. For Europe, we have selected the LCC MRX uh, code for program more of uh, um, Eurofusion demo. We need to fulfill the stress limits under different damage mode and uh, also the fast fracture damage mode if the embrittlement were occurred. Furthermore, we need to qualify the component design, qualify the materials, qualify also the manufacturing and the joints following the rules that is defined in the code. So the current HCBB design, the current HCBB design is uh, shown here. In, this is one blanket sector with two inboard and the three outboard. Here is the detailed view of the blanket. In the front, this is the so-called uh, first wall, and behind the first wall is the so-called breedism. At the breedism, the neutrons and the, the tritium, especially the tritium is braided. I mean, they produce in the breedism. Behind the breedism is the so-called uh, manifold for the coolings. And also at the end of this manifold, there should be a structure for the nuclear shielding. In this figure, I showed here the detailed view of this so-called fuel breeder pin. The coolant is going from this uh, inner pipe and cool down the structure and it returns from the analog gap. Inside of this uh, pin is the so-called uh, hollow ceramic breeder, which is used to, to produce tritium. And the surrounding this pin is the beryllium block, which is used for the neutron multiply function. Next, I will show you the coolant scheme. 
The coolant used in FCBD blanket is the helium at the pressure of 80 bar with an inlet temperature of 300 degrees C and outlet of 520. The coolant is uh, arranged in the series conditions. As we can see from this graph, the coolant is uh, distributed from the PHDS, which is the primary heating transfer system. The coolant is distributed up and down and transferred to different uh, regions. It first will cool down the first wall and then will cool the breeder zone. As we can see here, the detailed uh, scheme of the coolant. Here, the, the coolant is distributed from the manifold. From both sides, it is symmetric and connected at here and here. In this manifold, the coolant is then distributed parallelly to the breeder zone, these pins. After the cooling down the pins, it is connected through the holes in the other manifold. It, it is the after transport um, to outside of the blanket. So um, more importantly for the HCBB, there is a need of heat transfer enhancement for the breed, for the first wall and also for the breeder zone. As we can see, this kind of artificial roughness can improve the heat transfer performance. After that, we will need to after the design introduction, I will, need, I will talk about something about the performance figures. The most important one is, of course, the tritium breeding, which is related to the neutronic cell analysis. We're using a full heterogeneous MCMP model and with uh, the enrichment of 60%, we can reach a 1.2 TBR, which is way higher than the required uh, limit, which is 1.15. If we reduce uh, the enrichment of lithium 6, we still can fulfill the requirement. For the nuclear shielding, uh, we have reached uh, for the damage of vacuum vessel to 0.13 dpa per four per year. And we have also investigated the many materials for the shielding performance. And also, we need to calculate the temperature field of the blanket and the, the uh, pressure drop in the blanket segment, and also the structural analysis to assess the stress level. Now comes to the current WCL um, concept, which is uh, developed at INEA. It has the same um, um, common architecture of two inboard and three outboard segments. Here is showing the detailed review of the blanket region. Um, here, the first wall has been removed for uh, display. As we can see, there are many um, plates in the buffer plate and the vertical stiffening plate in order to make the structure stronger of the blanket. Here, the detailed view, view of the um, blanket. The same, the, the first wall is in the front and the behind the first wall is the breeder zone. In the breeder zone, there are many uh, structures uh, and also the uh, neutron multiplier and the tritium breeder, the lithium, lithium lake is uh, in, in here. There are also other structures, um, the stiffening plates and also these pipes used to cool down this region, the so-called double wall tube, in order to uh, improve the reliability of this concept. So um, the coolant scheme of this concept is the coolant is the pressurized water at 150 bar, 55 bar, uh, with an inlet air temperature of 295 and outlet temperature of 328, which is a so called PWR like conditions. And the, the cooling loops are arranged in parallel, which means they have two loops 
uh, separately call down the, the first wall and the, the braid zone, which is uh, different from the FCBB concept. Here we can see the detailed uh, distribution of the coolant. The coolant is going through this manifold through to the uh, double wall tubes in the bridism and then connected in this out, out uh, late manifold. For the WCL, we have also the performance figures for neutronics, uh, thermohygienics, and uh, thermomechanical, and uh, in particularly the MHD effect uh, calculation, which is a uh, key okay issue for this concept because it used the liquid metal. Liquid metal in the magnet uh, environment, it has this so-called MHD effect. Then comes to the challenges. Even though we have, do, uh, have done a lot of activity to improve all the concept through design, through R&D. However, we still have to face this um, uh, challenges. The first one is the reliability, availability, inspection, inspectability, and the maintainability, the so-called running. Because in the blanket, the, the structure is very complex and it requires a lot of weirds. And these weirds under irradiation conditions can fail very easily. So the reliability is um, not high for the bl blanket, which is common to any blanket. The second one is limited the first wall heat, heat transfer capability, uh, which is limited by the uniform material. The third one is the low reliability of treating modeling because we have a lot of uncertainties in the parameters and this could be uh, an issue for safety. Because when if we have a leak or permeation of the tritium into the coolant or to the environment. This tritium is radioactive. It would uh, it would uh, pose a safety issue for, to the uh, human or to the environment. And uh, there are also the EM loads, the electromagnetic loads during accident scenario, which can be very large which could destroy the whole blanket segment. And thirdly, the, and, and uh, lastly, the strong neutron induced DPTT shift. Uh, as I said already before, when the temperature is low than this value, the steel will become uh, brittle. For the manufacturing, we have um, a lower manufacturing release level and uh, the cost of manufacturing this component could be very high because up to now we have not built so many uh, blanket or blanket components. Um, furthermore, the, the lithium-6 enrichment, in order to uh, reach a good high treating breeding ratio, we need to enrich the lithium-6 and this enrichment will involve a large cost. Um, in addition, there is also the so-called uh, low, le low le readiness level of the available design codes. Because up to now, we don't have any um, nuclear fusion facility in operation. And therefore, there is no uh, established rules or codes to be used. So we need to uh, develop it. Even though we have already I think about, about 40 years of endeavor, but um, we're still closing the gaps. The last one is the tungsten coating technology. The tungsten coating to the first wall is not yet available for the demo scale. Then I will conclude with uh, my last slide. The, I have talked about the two candidates for the EU demo, the FCBB, and WCL, and these two concepts will be tested in each project as TBM. The, the main features of HCBB 
has been also covered and all together with WCL. And uh, commonly, I have also summarized the challenges facing both concept and uh, also specific concept to specific challenges to SABB and WCL. With this, I thank you for your attention. I would be very happy to answer your comments or questions. Thank you.